Ofcom are investigating over 300 complaints um, about All from that. Adam Bolton. All from <laughs> <laughs> that, that's amazing. 300 people watch Sky. <laughs> <laughs> he looks phenomenal. Does it, Alistair does bring that out in you, though. It's a gift, though, isn't he? He's oh. good at it. But fancy being involved in an argument with Alistair Campbell and you ending up being the one who goes <laughs> mad and looks like a lunatic. <laughs> I mean, that is traditionally Campbell's job. <laughs> He's also suggesting that Sky is biased. What's new? He used to say the BBC was biased and then went bonkers and tried to close it down. This is what Alistair does. Or did. <laughs> oh, no. no. With any luck, we're not going to see him anymore. Bye-bye, Alistair. Bye-bye, Mandy. <laughs> They're hosting the show next week. <laughs> <laughs> As you say, Gordon Brown has gone, and as a special treat, let's do our caption competition nice and early. Yeah. Brown and the Queen. She's saying, bad bloody time, I've not been able to nip out from milk since last Thursday. I'm absolutely <laughs> She's saying, I'm sorry, but Prince Charles thinks he's a lampshade at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and what about this? Bloody hell, you've regenerated. <laughs> <laughs> I think she's saying, Bzz, gotcha! <laughs> We've actually made our own tribute to Gordon. And to use a well-known phrase, let's take a look at his best bits. Thank you. <laughs> and goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Gordon Brown has gone. He's done the decent no, thing. He's not done the decent thing. He has. He's stepped aside. Well, no, but not immediately. No, doing the you decent thing about... would have been on Friday morning. You don't, don't talk about barnacles stepping aside me, when you <laughs> chip them off. Again. <laughs> What was he supposed to do? Constitutionally, he was the Prime Minister. It was his job to stay on until another government could possibly be formed. No, he was going to stay on until October. Yeah. 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 I understand why you don't understand how the country works. No. no, no, you do. No. Threatening to leave your party in six months' time and saying, I will sort out the deal so I will hang on that long is not constitutional. No, but that is an attempt to cling on to power. That is Mr Barnacle doing what he does. <laughs> it, it's no good saying I hate journalists because they happen to be critical of this particular thing. That's yeah. just cobblers. No, no, don't understand. The party I hate journalists the most had the chance yeah. to form the party. <laughs> it was very nice to me in the dressing room. <laughs> well, that's, uh, that's the Chrissy special. <laughs> When he finally resigned, I think, for the first time, he looked genuinely happy. Yeah. And for me, that was the first time he'd reflected the public mood. <laughs> Gordon has done the decent thing. Uh, he's stepped aside, so it's time for a more thoughtful reflection on the high points of Gordon's political career. Oh. <laughs> um. Time now for a quick-fire Gordon Brown round. Fingers on buzzers, teams. There have been allegations that Gordon can be quite bad-tempered. What technique does his aides develop to give him bad news? They ran out the door first. <laughs> Was it for a friendly psychic? <laughs> at a seance? Is there somebody here with a, with a £163 billion pound deficit? <laughs> <laughs> They developed a technique called the news sandwich, uh, oh. where they'd start off by first telling the Prime Minister about a recent piece of good coverage, then they <laughs> would deliver some bad <laughs> news, and uh, moving on quickly to tell him about something good that was coming up soon. It's also a technique that the Queen was exposed to this week. Gordon Brown's quitting. He's on his way to see you. He'll be gone soon. <laughs> How did uh, Gordon Brown take responsibility for the Damien McBride smear scandal? Well, he said, I take responsibility, I'll find out who it is and sack them. Let's have a look at him. I take full responsibility for what happens, that's why the person who was responsible went immediately. <laughs> <laughs> One of the smears involved a photo of George Osborne allegedly wearing stockings and suspenders. 
Uh, in fact, in the recent negotiations, the Lib Dems dropped their demands to get rid of Trident in return for seeing that photo. <laughs> to see that photo. Well, you bought him as a slave. Yeah. <laughs> Where and when was this picture taken? Was it at the coalition talks? <laughs> <laughs> Afghanistan. <laughs> yes, Little Heathrow in Afghanistan. Little Ooh. Heathrow. So there is a third runway. <laughs> 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 That's uh, been taken off. Oh, what, they're not going to build a third? Runway. No, third runway has been dumped. My ass. <laughs> is, is that is where the they get decided? <laughs> <laughs> There's too many rich all... people getting rich out of that. They won't stop that. Oh, well, it'd be such good to cynicism see is a thing of the past, Martin. Yeah, these are the new politics. <laughs> yeah, you don't so tell him off, do you? Eye. He's not a journalist. <laughs> he, like me, is just an ill-informed bystander. <laughs> Barely literate. <laughs> <laughs> And here he is in uh, Afghanistan trying to shake someone's hand. <laughs> Foreigners, don't you hate them? <laughs> Here's a similar moment outside number 10. Telling him off, he was going, but you shouldn't have shaken his hand. Don't shake mine. <laughs> <laughs> this is an historic week in which all of that stuff we've just been talking about <laughs> has happened. Uh, <laughs> Mirror journalist Jason Beatty wrote, Cameron is our 53rd Prime Minister, but for how long? Forever, dickhead. The next one will be the 54th. <laughs> Earlier in the election campaign, the Daily Mail slurred Nick Clegg by suggesting he was sympathetic to the Nazis. A headline which, in the end, made the coalition easier to sell to some of the dyed-in-the-wool Tories. <laughs> <laughs> David Cameron kicked off negotiations with the Lib Dems by making them an offer which he called big, open and comprehensive. First time he's used the word comprehensive <laughs> without adding the word oik. <laughs> At this key moment in British politics, a lot of attention's being paid to the smaller parties. But let's not forget the smallest party of all, Gordon's Farewell Drinks. Oh. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it's <laughs> Ian and Julia with four big points, and Paul and Chris have four big points. Four big points as well, oh. I think. <laughs> <laughs> And so, to round two, the one-armed bandit of news. <clears throat> Fingers on your buzzers, teams. Here's the first one. Fired. Mohammed Al-Fired. Um, <laughs> he's the owner of Harrods, and he sold it to the Qatari royal family for one and a half billion pounds. So, from now on, Harrods is going to be completely different. <laughs> <laughs> he's dressed up as a pharaoh there. Pharaohs were well known for wearing lounge suits. <laughs> Oh, they did. This particular one, Tooting Common. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a wonderful ego there. But you, you've got to admire the ego. He's got a fabulous ego. I went up and introduced myself to him once as a journalist, and he went, oh, yes, 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 grabbed my pad of paper and gave me his autograph and handed it back to me. <laughs> what do we know about the new owner, Sheikh Hamad bin Khalifa bin Hamad Abdullah bin Jassim bin Mohammed Al Thani? It's from Galway. <laughs> <laughs> He's the head of the Qatari royal family who've bought Al Fayed's shop. He has 27 children from three wives, and 15 years ago, he deposed his father, who was on holiday in Switzerland at the time. He sounds nice, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Mohammed Al Fayed's always been a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, what did we learn his favourite trick was? Does he jump out of cupboards shouting at people? <laughs> According to the Mail on Sunday, he likes to offer people smints and tell them that they're Viagra. <laughs> Not a soft mint, then. See what I've done there? Yes. He doesn't need Viagra. 